Campfire question. <laughs> Where we answer your questions about life, the universe, and marriage RV counseling. Camping. And marriage counseling, I guess. <laughs> Outdoor Nut asks, living in a small space, how do you not get on each other's nerves? Who says we don't? <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Sad. You no. think I, I get on your nerves? No, never, honey. Really? No, you don't. Sad. You don't. Well, you were strangling me. Well, I was joking. I was laughing. <laughs> It was a funny struggle. No, it's a good question. It really comes to the heart of the whole RV experience. You're in a small space with other people. You know, you really need to think carefully, I guess, about how your relationship is going to flourish in that environment. Yeah. I've often joked, if your first RV trip doesn't end your marriage, it'll probably strengthen it. We had a lot of people say that to us when we got married and we took our Airstream on our honeymoon the first year. They're like, oh, you'll either end up divorced or you'll be married forever. You know, it was sort of one extreme to the other, which I think is kind of funny. Well, if you have a relationship where you are constantly at odds with your spouse, yeah. then you're going to be adding some stress to your relationship mm -hmm. because it can be a challenge at times traveling around with an RV rig, especially if you're full timing and placing a lot of demands on your rig. Things are going to happen. You're going to mm -hmm. have uh, tires blow out. Your fan covers fly off. We're gonna do RV repair. Do it stop. You know, you're hauling around a little home on wheels and subjecting it to an earthquake. Some things are gonna happen. Well, you put a set of silverware up there too. I think in the question, though, he's really just wanting to know more of the day to day life, like living in a small space. How do you make that happen? One thing to remember is you're not in your rig together with the door closed all day long. You know, you're, you're not in this tiny space together all the time. That's one thing about RV camping and why most people do it is to get out and see places and have experiences, whether it's hiking or kayaking or biking or touring a brewery or a winery or whatever. Clean out the thief. We go taste the Cabernet. Yeah. So a lot of times we aren't really in our camper, we're out and about. And then when we are in our camper, and, and our Airstream is a s pretty small space. Yeah. You know, it's not the smallest out there, but it's not nearly as large as a big fifth wheel or motorhome. Yeah, I mean, we're 25 feet, so that's pretty compact. But we have our own little areas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, I've got my little desk. I can go sit at my laptop and I can do some work on Long Long Honeymoon. <laughs> yeah. And that can be my retreat. Maybe I'll put on headphones and edit video. Yeah, I will go sit on the bed, you know, put on headphones to listen to music or read a book or watch a TV show or whatever. So I think headphones are one thing because if I want to watch a TV show and Sean doesn't want to watch a TV show, I plug in my headphones and he doesn't have to hear whatever's going on. So I think just being considerate of the other person in those kind of scenarios. And there are probably times when you may want to retreat outside. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you if you just want some alone time or to step apart from your travel partner, right. I might go out and shoot video of moose. You know, I might go out and do some photography. I have my own sort of interest. I'm into photography and video. Yeah. So I go out and I do that sort of stuff. And yeah. Sometimes Sean will get up early in the morning, like 5:30 in the morning, and go photograph moose. That's not my thing. So I typically don't do that with him. He will take the truck, drive to photograph the moose and I stay at the camper and hang out or sleep or whatever. If it's that early in the morning, I'm probably not just getting up to sit around. So that's that's kind of my passion. Yeah. So I get up and I go do that by myself. Christy sometimes, she has a similar passion where she will go to this place called Ulta <laughs> and just coming. spend hours and hours hiking up and down those <laughs> aisles, carefully examining everything in there. You're stealing the show, baby girl, as usual. And that's just not really my passion. That's right. That's right. It could be a situation where one of you wants to go take a yoga class and the other person doesn't. You sort of trade off on who takes the car or who stays behind, you know, and you work it out. I think one thing that's really important though is to communicate how you're feeling. 
Like there have been times, I, I'm a city person. I like cities. I like being in the hustle and bustle. Now I do love national parks and that sort of thing too, don't get me wrong. But I'm an extrovert. Sean's an introvert. So he could live in a mountain cabin and not see another person for years and he probably would be a happy, happy camper. This would make a great sitcom. <laughs> We'll call it Green Acres. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> That's exactly it. And I like to be in the thick of things sometimes. Not all the time, but I do need that sometimes. So there have been times when we have been boondocking for many days at a time. And I will look at Sean and I will say, I need to get to a city. I need to, I need to go in a store. I need to go to a restaurant. I don't have to talk to a bunch of people. I just need to be in civilization and walking down a, an aisle looking at something or trying a new restaurant or, or whatever or even just going to a library like I said I don't have to talk to other people I just like to be out and amongst other people sometimes. she kind of likes the hustle and bustle of city life crowds really. don't bother me really as long as they're not like pushing up against me you know but I, I don't mind waiting I don't and Sean hates to wait he hates traffic doesn't like crowds. So <laughs> I loved the Yukon Territory where there was like one person for every 80 square miles. You know, it was like happy place for yeah, me. Yeah, Sean was totally at <laughs> peace and loved it, you know. I think it's just knowing what you need and being able to voice what you need. And it's a give and take relationship. I mean, sometimes we are boondocking in the middle of nowhere with no one around for a week or two at a time. And that's totally fine because Sean loves it. And I enjoy it to an extent. And then there are times when I say I need to be around people and civilization and we go to a nice RV resort. Or a brew pub. Or a brew pub. Or All just compromise. something like that where I can get out and feel the energy of other people. I, I think it's just knowing what you need, voicing your your needs in a caring, considerate fashion and compromising. Really our favorite areas, I think, are those places that have the spectacular beauty and wildlife, but yeah. also have a sense of a nearby town with people to be around, some nice yeah. restaurants or music. Honestly, I think you. that's why Grand Teton National Park is probably our favorite place to camp because you can camp in the park and look out your window and not see people or buildings you just see animals and scenery and it's lovely and we enjoy it and we can go hiking or kayaking or whatever and then we can get in our car and we can drive for 15 or 20 minutes and we can be in jackson and having a nice meal at a nice restaurant you know we can go to the library we can go to the stores around the square so it's sort of the perfect compromise for us i think don't you think? I do think. So <laughs> if you know any other places like that yeah. that have spectacular wildlife and scenery, but also have a thriving little mountain town or what have you, or beach town. Yeah, either way. Uh, let us know. Post a comment. And if you have suggestions with regard to how you get along with your travel partner or partners mm -hmm. in an RV, please post them below this video. Yeah. We like to hear what you guys have to say. All right. So that's it. Thanks, Outdoor Nut, for the fantastic fantastic campfire question <laughs> until next and time and i promise i would never really choke you in real life well i would hope not but <laughs> <laughs> So if you haven't, please click that subscribe button down below. It means the world to us. If you want to make sure you never miss a Long Long Honeymoon video, be sure to click the little bell icon next to the subscribe button and you will get a notification every time we post a new video. If you haven't, please like our Facebook page, follow us on Instagram. Ask us a campfire question, we just might answer it. That's right. You might be featured here. We are Sean and Christy. This is the Long Long Honeymoon where we say... Lo -lo. Oh. Hey guys, if you like our videos, a great way to say thank you is to shop using our store on Amazon. You can find it at amazon.com slash shop slash long long honeymoon. Everything you need for your next RV adventure awaits in our store. But you don't have to just buy camping gear. You can use our store to buy anything that Amazon sells. When you make a purchase using our store, we receive a small commission. We're reinvesting those commissions into the production of our show. So a great way to support Long Long Honeymoon is to do all of your Amazon shopping using our store. And one other thing to remember, all purchases made in the Amazon store are completely private. 
so we have no idea who is buying what. So if you're looking to buy a new banana slicer, you now know where to go. Or a banana hammock. <laughs> I beg your pardon. I mean, I'm just saying. 